Okay, so I've mentioned this before in another video. I think it was the one with um, all the black hole shit with iron. But I remembered reading something in one of my books about Orion having iron out. And then I happened to just start Googling shit. Uh. And it took me a minute to... It took me a minute. It's take, I, I got to have no men where like iron element from... Like, no, that doesn't help. Then I found this one. We're going to watch this next time. And then I had to Google a bunch of shit, and I'm all the way down here, too. And and for some reason, Google's the search engine. I'm going to... Of course, I didn't spell it. Maybe that was my fuck up, but I don't think so. But as you can see, it really took me a minute to scroll down to try to find something that might talk about iron in abundance, and it's from NASA. Of all places, surprisingly. The iron abundance is determined in the Orion Nebula from the observed emission lines of the iron plus and iron double plus. In comparison of the derived value with the iron abundance in the sun and the interstellar medium is made. Published date October 1975. That makes 32, which makes a 5. 6 if you add the 10 from October, but yeah. Citations. Let's see. Oh, there are even publications. Papers that cite on the abundance of interstellar gases. Okay. Let's see. Iron abundance in H double regions. Iron oxygen abundance ratio in the Orion Nebula, faint emission lines in the spectrum of the Orion Nebula and the abundance of some of the rarer elements, near infrared emissions and of M82 supernova remnants, implications for tracing the supernova context of the galaxies, ultraviolet gas absorption and dust extinction towards M, probably M82, but it might be M8. And these and a lot of these are actually old, like 1990, 1991. This is going down the scale of like age. Let's see. Solar, stellar, outer atmospheres, and energetic particles and galactic cosmic rays. And mind you, you can read this. You could you could read these. You could actually you could and the and they tell you how many citations and references they have in their shit too. Then there's Sinbad, thank goodness. But yeah, like you, like I'm not sure what how I found this, but it's here. Let's see. What if I click this? What's that do? There it is. Received June 24th, 1975. Um, Captain Astronomical Institute, University of Gornegin. Abundance is interstellar matter. And you can find shit like this. I'll, uh, like, I think this is just an out script. Because I'm like, what the fuck is this number? But okay. Oh, okay, it only shows you five. But, oh, that's okay. I don't need very much. There's probably more, but I'm okay with that. But as you can see, it tells all sorts of shit. Uh, and you can read these kind of articles. It's really not that hard. The problem that people have with, like, the different variations of science and actually understanding them and implicating them is that they actually don't take the time to actually, thank you, phone, read and learn and observe and watch and see the demonstrations. You know, because science is supposed to give the answer. It's supposed to feed your imagination and curiosity. You know, curiosity killed the cop, but sa killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. We only know what we know about things because we fucked around to find out. Let's see. It is of interest to compare these interstellar abundance with the abundance obtained from another region in the interstellar medium, namely the ionized H 
do the yeah i'll go with dual region since one usually assumes that the presence of an exciting star is more or less accidental and affects only the ionization and not the abundance of the elements unless there is some evaporation of elements from grains which is not likely for refractory substances such as iron or the fat i thought i saw something about uh da, da, da. orion all right oh Aller and Lyler, I should have stayed right the fuck there in my dumbass. Aller and Lyler in 1959 studied the abundances of the Orion Nebula and came to the conclusion that the, ne that the blah, 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 nebular abundances are in extremely good agreement with the abundances in early type stars and thus in essence in good agreement with the cosmic abundance. <clears throat> I mean, like, you guys can take the time to read this. I'll leave the link in the thing. Right by NASA nice Astrophysicist Data System. And I know someone is going to be out be like, Ah, oh, you listen to this. It is just like, whoa. Why shouldn't I? Why should I listen to the people who actually took the time to actually study this shit and learn this shit and learn from them instead of listening to people who didn't? You know, I mean, it's coming to a point now where it's just like, I'm starting to get older and now I'm understanding um, people who actually took the time to, t to study for these disciplines and these achievements... They deserve to be heard out and listened to. And also, they took all this time to do all this study and learning just so I can have a smartphone in my hand and be like, fuck these scientists. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. No, that, that doesn't make any sense. There are too many people trying to convince my black ass not to trust science or scientists as if I'm not supposed to read a book. And that makes me want to read even more. Like, don't tell me what to do because I'm just going to do what the fuck I was going to do but now I'm going to add that to the fucking list since you didn't want me to do like that's how I'm seeing it it's just like why shouldn't I look at this shit and study it because honestly the more I read into this scientific shit strangely enough the more it's verifying what I already know in a spiritual sense maybe it's confirmation bias but, um, kind of weird I'm reading a book about death that's telling me that I gotta go back to fucking Orion to figure out where the fuck else I can go. Just to find out that it makes sense that we ended up here as stuck on an iron drawing planet. If Orion is, has an abundance of iron and is traveling this way. It makes a lot of sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't know about you, but it doesn't make me. Hmm. Ooh, look at those. Look at those. I ain't attempt. What the fuck happened with the sp something? Wow, this is really old. You can tell because like uh, if someone was n did not have the ability to go back and correct this with whiteout or something. Like look at that, all that running in. This is definitely something that was typed. This is not. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think this is um, published on an actual computer. I think this is actually a Xerox copy. Because uh, like the, like some of these are just like yeah, that's definitely a typo from a computer. Hmm. Oh, I'm numbered. I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm too ignorant. Like, look at all them transitions. Look at all the, look at all the, these things that are symbols and shit that I, I, don't, I know that's Greek, but I don't know what that says. We see that the iron abundance determined above is substantially lower than the value found in the sun. It would require cross-section a factor of 20 smaller than average value one used or electron temperatures lower than less than 5,000 K. 
to increase the nebular value sufficiently to obtain agreement, and both of these possibilities seem unlikely. The value of the iron abundance determined in the interstellar medium in the direction of clouds are given in Table 3. The first two entries are taken from the work of the Debo Elat. Or Ea. Wait, the Boar Ea? I'm not trying that ever again. And the third from Drake and Postat. The amount of new neutral hydrogen is quite large in these directions, so there is a reason to believe that most radiation above 13.5 EV does not penetrate the clouds, therefore little Fe is further ionized. Since little Fe is observed in abundance value, it's approximately the total iron abundance. From table three, we... S yeah, whatever. Can the nebula abundance determination be lowered? That's a good question. Conclusion. We thus find an abundance of iron in the Orion Nebula, which is about a factor of 20 smaller than the solar abundance, but is a factor 10 larger than the interstellar, interstellar iron abundance. Although the uncertainty in the determination are large, and in particular the conclusion cross-section is badly known, it seems unlikely that the uncertainties are sufficient to change the abundance by an order of magnitude. You know what that means good for you. I have no idea what I just said, but it was very interesting. Like, there are things to find, but, like, you actually have to, like, know what you're looking for, I guess. But this is very interesting. And then there's all these citations. There's all these references, which is nice. Very nice. All these citations that talk about similar things, too. This one is in 1995, which is interesting. It show it is shown that a partially ionized zone, PIS, are responsible for most of the oxygen one and iron two emissions in the H two region and in the Orion Nebula in particular. Given that O da da and Phi plus are the dominant ionization states of oxygen and iron, respectively, in the partially ionized zone. I thought we were calling them PIS. Okay, the observed iron slash oxygen whatever ratio provides a reasonable measure of the iron slash oxygen ratio in the region. Employing appropriate conditions of temperatures and electron density in the zone, we find that the iron oxygen abundance ratio in Orion is much closer to the solar value than in earlier studies. Depletion of iron into grains within the ionized region of the nebula may therefore be considerably less than previously estimated or assumed. I'm so happy I can look at like stuff like this. <laughs> Data products. Ooh, it's got one. Sweet. I almost want to look at that. But yeah, that was just something I, I vaguely remembered. It was just like, oh, okay. Now, I'm glad I know I know that I saw that at some point and it kind of made sense. I'm not entirely sure what this entirely means. But now I want to look more into like iron and shit. So I'll probably do that. Hmm? Okay, that's all. Bye.